Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on how to implement the seismic provisions for a vertical braced frame gusset connections. In RAM Connection Standalone, you can assign seismic provisions to a column beam brace joint, a chevron brace joint, and a column base joint. And we have both ordinary concentric braced frames and special concentric braced frames available. We will now turn our attention to the RAM Connection Standalone application where as you can see, I have three different joints that have already been created in this model. Now each of these joint types are able to be designed for seismic provisions. Now before we get into the design of the connections, however, we should make sure that our model is appropriately set up for seismic provisions. So we're going to show you how to do all of that information as well in this video. So the first thing I'm gonna do when preparing for seismic provisions is to make sure my code information is set appropriately. To do that, go to the design tab of your ribbon toolbar and select your design code icon. Here is where you're gonna tell the program which design code you're going to be using and whether or not to consider seismic provisions. For this exercise, I will go ahead and say yes, consider seismic provisions, with seismic design category D. Now that I've entered the coding information, I also need to make sure that my load combinations have been generated to be prepared for seismic provisions. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. In the home tab of the ribbon toolbar, let's go ahead and click on the add and edit load conditions icon. Now for this particular model, you're gonna notice that I have dead load, live load, wind load, and seismic load already created in this model, and reactions associated with each of these load types have already been created for each of the joints within my model. You're also gonna notice, however, that no load combinations have been created thus far. So let's get started with that portion of the workflow. Now in RAM Connection Standalone, you can either generate load combinations using one of the templates that we provide to you, or you can create your own manually. I'm gonna go ahead and generate my load combinations. To start that process, I'm gonna to go to the Home tab of the ribbon toolbar and click on the Generate icon. Now, when I'm taking a look at preparing my model for seismic provisions, it's important that I generate the appropriate load combinations. For this particular model, I'm going to be designing my structure for the ASCE 7, LRFD standard. So I do want to generate load combinations considering LRFD factored load combinations. So here I'm going to select the appropriate template and I'm going to make sure it is LRFD since that's the code version or method that I chose. And then I'll go ahead and click generate. I can review the load combinations that it's going to generate and then I can go ahead and click OK. Now, in addition to your traditional design load combinations though, I also need to think about the load combinations that will be required for seismic provisions. Now, for this particular exercise, I'm going to be generating additional load combinations for the AISC 341. This is an LRFD version, and it's going to include the amplified seismic combinations. Here we'll be able to see the overstrength factor that will be assigned to the seismic load case. Now once we've selected our amplified seismic load combinations, let's click on the generate button and then again we'll click OK. Now if we wanted to review that information or make any changes including to the seismic load factor, you can take a look at that information in the add and edit load conditions icon. Here you can see that my typical design load combinations and then also the ones associated with steel amplified seismic. 
Now that we've specified the coding information and the load combinations, the next step before getting into connection design is to specify the frame type that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and decide which joint I'm going to focus on first. And for me, I'm going to focus on joint number one. Now, when you're designing a braced frame for seismic provisions, you are going to want to specify the frame type within the joint data. To do that, we're going to either enter that information when we create our joint, or for this example, let's go ahead and edit that information now that the program knows I want to consider seismic provisions. So I've highlighted joint number one. This is a beam column brace joint. I'm going to go to the Home tab of the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Edit icon. Now while I'm editing the joint, I'm going to take a look first at this braced frame system. Here you can see I have two different options here. I can go with an ordinary concentric braced frame or a special concentric braced frame. So for this particular example, I'm going to go with an ordinary uh, concentric braced frame. So once I've specified my braced frame system, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to assume all the other load data or joint data is still appropriate. Now at this point in my workflow, I'm ready to go ahead and assign a gusset connection to joint number one. Again, this is a beam column brace connection. To start that process, click on the design tab of the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. Now what we're going to notice is that the filter was already specified for the type of joint that we had selected. For this case, that would be a vertical bracing system for a column beam brace joint. What you're also going to notice is that all gusset connections are considered smart connections within RAM connection standalone. Now that being said, I should be able to see a filtered list of connections that would be appropriate for the joint I have selected. And here you can see that we have a couple different you know, configurations for how that would look. I'm gonna select this option here. This is our joint template that's specifically for a concentric braced frame. I'm gonna select this option, click the assign button. And then click close once the connection assignment is complete. Now here in the joint selection area, you're gonna notice that your status of your connection design will be available. Here I can see that my interaction ratio is less than 1.0, meaning that it did pass the code check requirements, but it is in yellow, meaning that I did produce some type of warning uh, during this connection design. And that's something I'm gonna wanna go ahead and review. To review your connection design, select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then edit your gusset connection. Here within the connection pad, you'll be able to see all the different types of parameters that you can go ahead and customize per your connection design or detailing requirements. Now, anything over here in the left-hand pane that has a little blue arrow next to it, these are the types of parameters that were specified either through the code data or the joint data. And those are the types of parameters you're not going to want to change directly in the connection pad. You should really go back to those areas of the program, change them there, and save them so they're officially saved to this joint. Now, anything else that doesn't have a blue arrow can be customized per your detailing requirements or again, to get rid of any warnings or, or errors. Now, before I go ahead and start taking a look at massaging my different parameters in the interfaces area, I'm gonna go ahead and review my connection report to determine why I'm getting this warning. So let's select the results icon in the ribbon toolbar, and we'll be able to review our steel connection report. So here I'll be able to say that the 
or here I'll be able to see that I did receive a warning in the geometric consideration area that the connector to member weld side is insufficient. So they're saying a minimum value is 2 16 maximum value is 3 16 and I provided 5 16 So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at basically the connector um, on the gusset plate itself. I'm going to scroll down to see if I see anything else that might be yielding a warning. So it looks like the welding information is, is where that warning's coming from. Now that I have that information, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the report. And now I'm going to take a look at the connection detailing for this particular example. Now what I'm seeing so far is that the default detailing of this type of connection is that basically my braced member, my bracing member, is going to be welded to a plate that then is bolted to the gusset plate. What I'd probably prefer to do for this particular example, considering my geometry, is I want to see if welding directly to the gusset might work, and then maybe I can eliminate this plate and these bolts. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now within RAM Connection Standalone, you can modify gusset connections through the different interface areas. So here you have the left beam, the right beam, upper right, upper left, lower left, and lower right braces. You're gonna to go to those particular areas to affect that area of the connection. So what I wanna take a look at is I wanna take a look at the upper right brace, and I wanna take a look at the gusset to brace connection. And this is the parameter I'm kind of looking for. Here you can see it's gonna be a bolted connection. And let's see if a welded connection might work. No effect on the interaction ratio or the warning so far, but I have another gusset in this connection. So let's change that one to see if it's going to affect the overall status. So next I'm going to select the lower right brace. I'm going to go again with the gusset to brace connection. And then again, let's see if a welded option might work for us. So now making that change, I could see that I was able to avoid that warning altogether, and actually it did have a significant effect on my interaction ratio. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save the changes I made, and I'm going to exit out of the connection pad. This is actually detailed the way I would prefer anyway, and it had a very positive effect on both warnings and errors for this particular exercise. Now at this point, this concludes our process for designing connections in RAM connection standalone considering seismic provisions. As demonstrated in this video, this includes a few extra steps than just your traditional connection design, including appropriately selecting your code requirements to consider seismic provisions, generating your load combinations to consider the amplified seismic cases, to define the type of braced frame that you have through your joint data, and then finally selecting the appropriate connection type that would consider seismic provisions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.